Copyright infringement. <laughs> speaking skills of my colleague, Chris Lawson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any of us will ever forget that. It's just yeah. incredible. And hopefully, you know, did you get that alert that I just added? <laughs> <laughs> now, thank you. <laughs> this isn't a speech. This is uh, a bunch of little scribbled notes I did a couple years ago before John's retirement. Because it just got me thinking about you know, having done this for a long time, when you start out, you don't have to think about what's it going to be like when I retire. Not, not the retirement part, but like what's work life going to be like after you put in a lot of years. And so I kind of talked about it at John's retirement, but I thought it might be appropriate because, you know, there's not as a lot of different people here. But, and one of the things is that we, all the things that we have today, smartphones and the computers and PCs and whatnot. It's like when I started, which isn't that long ago, <laughs> it's like 1979 is the year I started a PGA. Uh, so it's like, hey, it's like the 70s, it's not that long ago. <laughs> but when I started, okay, so first off, I, I worked, I did some training stuff when I first started, and then I joined the group that John was in. So, we had our office in the basement of 77 Beale Street. It was adjacent to the machine room. That's the only computer center at the time that PGE had in the basement. So we had no windows. <laughs> we didn't have our own phone numbers. So like when you're at your desk, we had like two phone numbers in our little office. And it was on one of those old phones that has like Buttons at the bottom, so it starts ringing. You punch the button. And you pick it up. It's a stone age. Uh, we didn't have cubicles. Well, that's sort of whatever. It just had a credenza thing on the desk, right? Uh, our boss at the time, Lyle Carter, he'd been at, already at PGE for like a million years. He started, I think, in like 1949. Just, you know, somewhere before they even had computers, for real. And and he had a little separate little office because he smoked. Like people still smoke, right? So he had a thing where he could close the door and he smoked in there. Said, okay. I mean, today you just like <laughs> it's not a bit healthy. It's like we didn't think about it. Okay, so lots of notes, no PCs, right? Didn't exist yet. Remember, like the IBM PC came out in 1985, Mac, or you know, whatever came out maybe a little before. So we just had like dumb terminals. Talk to our mainframe. Okay, no voicemail. So if you didn't answer the phone, like you didn't answer the phone, right? This one has sort of two-edged sword. No email. It's like that could be good, right? How much time did we spend? Screwing around with email. So we had the one data center, like I talked about. We had only mainframe computers. They were at least as big as this room. 
and they had like the main one had eight megabytes of memory. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this has like 64 gig, so it's like a gazillion times more. And this thing probably has more processing capacity than that. But that those mainframes ran our whole at the time, whatever we had on the computers. We had an online customer system that somebody mentioned about CIS. It was a customer information system. Don't forget punch cards. Yeah, <laughs> right. Punch cards were useful for little <laughs> And taking notes on, you know, the instruments. They were just the right size. Uh, and so today it's like everything's like instant, right? 24 by 7, you know, Company can get a hold of you when you're in the bathroom, whatever. <laughs> so back then, John and I would be, or our team, like Bob Nice, he's also back here, he's one of my left. We would, if we, if they had a problem with the mainframe, they'd call us at home. No cell phones, no nothing, whatever. No home phone, they'd call us. So we try, we'd have to talk to them in the middle of the night, which of course you're just woke up, because like back then I didn't work till. 12 o'clock at night. He's like, what am I going to do? Just sit in front. There's nothing. I have no nothing to do. He <laughs> couldn't do any work. So the world is all good for you. That's probably what helped you. So, so they would call us and they would try to explain something and we'd try to talk back to them. And they were in the machine room. So it's got like air conditioners and wind, you know. So totally noisy, they couldn't even understand what we were saying, maybe you know, vice versa. Eventually we got the new, I guess it was a cellular phone, I don't know, but it was a big honking Motorola thing, it like a paperback book or whatever. And so one of the other things that uh, I always remember John saying is that when we, at some point we went from getting your paycheck on a piece of paper, right? And it, boss would you take in the office to direct deposit. And John always used to tell, always used to give the manager of the computer operations department at the time, a guy named Rich Wells, he always used to tell him like, you're going to have to keep printing those checks until I retire because I'm not going to convert to <laughs> <laughs> So we did a lot of work together over the years. With all of you folks, I mean, helping me out, and I'm helping you. I, I you've heard the story of my, uh, I guess, what you call it, whatever transition just to the database team, and doing that kind of work. And then, like I told, I did tell Teresa a little while ago. It's like I feel like I'm still learning new things every day, probably this afternoon or whatever. So I think that was the best. Thing I did in my career was to make that change and, and to be able to get into something new and, and, and just be able to do what I like doing. So I got into this whole computing stuff back in college. A friend of mine convinced me to take a class that I've never even seen a computer before. And he had gone to school somewhere else. And while we were in high school, his dad worked for a shell, I think, and he went and took some computer classes. So he said, Oh, yeah, take some programming thing. Basic, I think, basic programming. And that just, when I started doing that, it was like click. And it was just like that's the part that all these years has always brought me. You know, to say something about work brings me joy. It's like, okay, it's, it's the most enjoyable part of the work. Uh, I think that uh, that's the part, besides all the people that you know, I enjoy working with every day, I'm doing some of that is going to be. The thing that I miss from work. I'm not going to miss it in that sense. <laughs> but that aspect of it, you know, I, I sent something out a week or two ago to the DEA is just kind of like, oh, Kim's last, you know, whatever, little hints and tips and stuff like that. And one of the things I thought of was like, you know, try to, for everybody, to try to minimize the parts of the job that just irritate the heck out of you or that you have to do that you don't really like and maximize the stuff that you enjoy. And then going to work isn't, isn't work in that sense. I mean, I told my son once a long time ago that I used to go to work to play on the computer. And that's kind of what it was like. You know, you 
you create some things. I mean, writing, Chris talked about me and my infamous scripts. And, and writing these little programs and stuff is just a way, it's like a creativity thing. That you, you know, for me, it was an enjoyable thing. It sounds kind of weird and whatever, but it's, it's the fun part of it for me. So that's what I'm going to miss, I think. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I was thinking of some other things, but I can't think of them at the moment. But I'm glad I stayed for the this big project that we just finished with the customer care and billing. That uh, was uh, incredibly, I guess, stressful coming into it. I wasn't sleeping very well, waking up early and worrying. Disastrous. <laughs> 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 you know, I didn't want it to come true, but you know, whatever. It's like you, you know, if you work with technology, you know they can sometimes kind of go haywire. On you, so, but it, we came through it okay, and uh, thanks to our project manager Sundeep and all the other team members, uh, we were successful. Uh, I did want to. That was some other things I want to mention. Sorry, <laughs> but when I started working for Teresa. There were some other folks on the team at the time, Jay, Jill Lurie, and Annette, that were kind of my, I saw them as my mentors. They were there to know all this stuff, and I couldn't believe that they could, they were probably laughing more. Like, God, he doesn't even know how to do the simplest thing. <laughs> Log into the database. You know, so. But slowly it came, I had like little cheat sheets of, by my desk to have all the commands, because I couldn't remember any of them at the time. They were all sort of new, so. But, uh, I guess here I am. I guess now I am a DBA. You're a supervisor. You know, now, I mean, most people here know that there's companies going through some changes that are kind of affecting a lot of the teams. And, you know, it's, it's happened before, it'll probably happen again. Can't say, you know, but it's just hard to see the teams that you've been part of to be kind of split apart because you build all the camaraderie and, and build up the knowledge that you're using to make your, do your job better. And, and it doesn't always seem that the powers that be like her value that. So, But I value everybody in here who's worked with me over the years. And I wish you well in your future endeavors. And I actually made it through without needing a Kleenex. <laughs> Thank you.